kick it. Kick it off. Got the recording hey. in progress message from Zoom. Yes, we are recording. Welcome to the Forever Sevens virtual open mic. Ooh. Whee! <laughs> Turn up. We're here on Mondays. Um, yeah, dishing out positivity, dishing out good vibes, dishing out encouragement just to get through the west the rest of the week. Because some days it is tough. And Mondays is one of them. Okay. So John, kick it off. Well, my first question before I start with the poetry is is anybody getting a links from Zoom? Telling us that you're you're on at uh, ten or at ten Eastern, and giving the link in, Zoom link information to get on because I'm not the only reason I get on is because I copied down your Zoom link from a month or so ago. Well, I sent out an individual an individual email, um, but that may be a question. I might have that gotten that, but I'm not getting Zoom. Maybe that's the question Ayati can answer, but she got the link. She did. She did, yeah, because she was able yeah. to sign on. Uh, huh. I think it's um, where the event description is on Eventbrite. That's where the link is. Huh. I can share it if that will help. Very strange. That's it. The, let's try the Forever Seven. Mm. I get what she's saying. Oh, so it was in the description, but you didn't receive an email with the link. The latest thing I've gotten that, um, looking at my email search results. Yeah, it's not in the emails. It's, um, so it's on the event, right? It's on the event, right page. Hold on. The Eventbrite page. Oh, well, okay. And I will have to look there next time if I can't get it without a, with the stuff that I've had saved from long ago. So let's do the poetry. Shall we start with smile? Why not? Smile though your heart is aching. Smile even though it's breaking. When there are clouds in the sky, you'll get by. If you smile through your fear and sorrow, smile and maybe tomorrow you'll see the sun come shining through for you. Light up your face with gladness. Hide every trace of sadness. Although a tear may be ever so near, that's the time you must keep on trying. Smile, what's the use in crying? You'll find that life is still worthwhile if mm. you'll just smile. And then we could go to young at heart. Fairy tales can come true. It can happen to you if you're young at heart. You will for it's hard you will find to be narrow of mind if you're young at heart. You can go to extremes with impossible schemes. You can laugh when your dreams fall apart at the seams. And life gets more exciting with each passing day, for love is either in your heart or on its way. Don't you know that it's worth every treasure on earth to be young at heart. For as rich as you are, it's much better by far to be young at heart. And if you should survive to 105, think of all you'll derive out of being alive. And this is the best part. You'll have a head start if you are among the very young at heart. And finally, Time to take out the garbage. Now, what in heaven's name could that mean? Can anyone guess? 
Well, no guesses, here we go. Sarah Cynthia Stil Sylvia Stout would not take the garbage out. <laughs> scour the pots and scrape the pans, candy the yams and spice the hams. And though her daddy would scream and shout, she simply would not take the garbage out. And so it piled up to the ceilings, coffee grounds, potato peelings, brown bananas, rotten peas, chunks of sour cottage cheese. Crust chunks of, it filled the can, it covered the floor, it cracked the window and blocked the door with bacon rinds and chicken bones, drippy ends of ice cream cones, prune pits, peach pits, orange peel, gloppy glumps of cold oatmeal, pizza crusts and withered greens, soggy beans and tangerines, crusts of black burned buttered toast, gristly bits of beefy roast. The garbage rolled down down the hall. It raised the roof. It broke the wall. Greasy napkins, cookie crumbs, gobs of gooey bubble gum, cellophane from green bologna, rubbery, blubbery macaroni, peanut butter caked and dried, curdled milk and crusts of pie, moldy melons, dried up mustard, eggshells mixed with lemon custard, cold French fries, rancid meat, yellow lumps of cream of wheat. At last the garbage reached so high that it finally touched the sky and all the neighbors moved away and none of her friends would come to play. And finally Sarah Cynthia Stout said, okay, I'll take the garbage out. By then of course it was too late. The garbage reached across the state from New York to the Golden Gate and there in the garbage she did hate, poor Sarah met an awful fate. One that I cannot now relate because the hour is much too late. But children, remember Sarah Stout and always take the garbage out. So wrote Shel Silverstein. Mm. Who are the, yes, who are the other two authors, John, for Smile? Um, the music for Smile was written by um, Charlie Chaplin, but who the authors are, I don't remember. Okay. And Young at Heart was sung by Frank Sinatra. Uh, who, who, who the lyricists were, I don't know. No problem. Uh, I, I might have it in the file. I'll look it up while the next person is performing. Awesome. Speaking of the next person, we have the very talented Dawn. Hey. Hey, Dawn, Hi. welcome back. How you feeling? Um, I'm good. I, I don't have much. I have a flight to catch in the morning. So, um, yeah. Hey. Hi. Hey. Okay. We're ready for you whenever you are. All right. This one is called Nothing. I think I've read it before, but yeah. Um, in the beginning, there was nothing. Not the same nothing I hand to those who say they love me that leaves my dry lips to meet their furrowed brows and greets their concerns with the reassurance that there is something, something more than my own nothingness, greater than the bored nothing that consumes me when I look at my notification bar and stare at a nothing that turns my arms into canvases and the hallways that once held blood but now cobwebs, like those in the Garden of Eden, where Adam and Eve took God's trust and deflated it as if it were a lung letting out its last breath, cutting away from life to be suspended in death, not just until someone cuts the shoelace off my neck to ask me questions in which I will respond, nothing, but forever. The nothing I seek is the one that is friends with forever, that I sit awake at night to catch a glimpse of. The nothing that is there, was there, in the beginning when God looked at the world and said, first, let there be nothing. Thank you. Really loved it. A little dark, but beautiful. Love that. Um, wow, that's so funny that you mentioned, not funny, but ironic that you mentioned um, it being a little dark because I, my next book, which is launching um, July 27th, 
it features poetry and a workbook. And I felt like it was just um, an oxymoron. So I was very, very reluctant to put it out into the world because I felt like it carried a lot of darkness. And then how can it carry this darkness? And then in the same token, carry all of this light with the workbook portion. Um, and uh, I spoke with Cynthia. She's a regular, she's not here today, but um, I spoke with her earlier today and she just mentioned how poetry can come from the pain and that in itself is light. Uh, so, exactly. yeah. <laughs> yes. Um, so thank you for sharing that, Dawn, and thank you for chiming in, Ayati, because uh, sometimes we as poets need to need to get a little feedback, you know, to feel felt. Um, yeah. Okay. So up next we have Ayati. Ayati. Okay. So I need I need like a minute. I have to get to my keyboard. Just thirty. Um, so the song is I don't know, hold on. Am I visible? Yeah. Okay. Cool. So this song is called uh, Child of Stars and I hope I am audible. I don't know if any of that was audible and it's a little late to ask, but I hope it was. 
We could hear you. Yeah. Um, there was there were some moments where it was a little scratchy. It seems like the phone, maybe uh, you have it sitting up on something. What? I'm sorry. It sounds like the device that you have it sitting on may be too close or too far. I don't know. <laughs> it's hard to gauge. Oh, yeah. But um, I'll post it on the website and you and and you can figure it out from there. I think it may be too far. Maybe. And thank you, Don. I just saw. Awesome. Cynthia joined us. Okay, so I'm going to do a poem and then we can go to the top of the list or we can squeeze Cynthia in. <clears throat> I know she's always ready, so I'll read a poem and then um, we'll let Cynthia go. Okay. All right. She never asked, but she soon found out he was broken. He was alone, attractive and unattached, cold like a cell, cold like the chills during a hunger strike, cold like there is no hunger strike. I just don't like you, so you don't get to eat tonight. Cold like a cell, cold as hell. He'll remind her of the things that she can't remember, remember when after remember when. She can't remember when she saw him last. Then he was free at last. She had her first kiss by then and her second heartbreak had already happened. And although she still holds his heart, she knows that he stole a piece of happiness from hers. Unfortunately for him, it's no longer in his possession to fix. She has patience because she has problems. Problem is she might have too many problems, but she has patience now. They weren't good enough then. She's trying to figure out what to do with that, what to do with seven hours and 30 minutes. It seems like enough time to rest, but depression is a pest transforming hope into a pessimist, unable to see the sun, unable to feel the sun. By the time the day begins for her, a new one had already begun. But endings lead to new beginnings, new beginnings of show and tell outside. As soon as you step out of the house, it's like you've entered a time machine and were spit out into the 80s, you know, when life had a little bit more substance, except all they do is talk about it like things never changed, like talking things changes the fact that they are all stagnant, sitting and still and probably still drunk, it's the perfect place to go for people who abuse substances. The perfect place to go when you don't want to go home, when you don't want to face your problems. It's an escape for everyone and he will, he still hasn't been housebroken, he is still broken, so it's an escape for him too. Laughter, dominoes and beers almost every day like a never ending day party without the monopolization and outside because the inside is falling apart just like him. But he is too prideful to admit it. So outside is where new beginnings begin, just not for him. While everyone is able to go home and take care of their needs and their business, he is left preparing for the next day party. Different crowds, same thing. Some things end, some things begin, some things repeat. Okay. Wow. Tough stuff, deep thought. Deep thought. <laughs> Wait. <laughs> All right. Cynthia, it's on you. Okay. Well, can I ask you to uh, pause the recording because I'm practicing this piece still? I definitely can. Thank you, yeah. And do you all remember that? 
And you all remember that poem from Days of Youth, The Worms Crawl In? <laughs> Did you ever think as a hearse goes by that you might be the next to die? They wrap you up in a big white sheet, then bury you down about six feet deep. They put you in a big black box and cover you over with dirt and rocks. And all goes well for about a week. But then the coffin begins to leak. The worms crawl in, the worms crawl out, the worms play pinochle on your snout. They eat your eyes, they eat your nose, they eat the jelly between your toes. A big round worm with rolling eyes crawls in your stomach and out your eyes. Your stomach turns a slimy green and pus pours out like whipping cream. Your eyes fall in and your hair falls out. Your brains come pouring out of your snout. The worms crawling in were lean and thin. The worms crawling out are fat and stout. Now bones are all that's left of you. In time, your bones will be dust too. Lovely. That was wonderful, John. Ashes to ashes. And flesh to worms. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> all right. Shout out to you all for carrying on. <laughs> yeah, Dee was trying to get in. Has she pulled over yet? Yeah, she did. Okay. She Zoom is very advanced. Um, Shout out to Zoom for that because I was so worried. I'm like, oh crap, is everyone going to be kicked out? Is everyone going to have to sign back in? But um, I didn't even yeah, have to. I'm surprised that you were able to go to... without having a co-host, so... and you kept us all. In right, I know. Yeah. Right, everything just carried on. Um, so that's pretty dope. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> Ta da. <laughs> <laughs> Magic. Okay, so up next we have Ayati. Um, okay. Okay, so um, I'm not sure. Okay, um, I'll set a little bit of context, which is that a couple of days ago I came across this article on the new in the New Yorker, which said that they had found uh, the letters that the poet had written to Rilke. Um, people already knew of the letters that Rilke had written to the poet, but they recently found the poet's letters to Rilke and that, that inspired this poem. It's called Lift. Um, and I just realized that I might have a bit of an accent for you guys. Um, so I'm also gonna put the poem there so you can follow it apart from my words also. Once I can get this thing. Today they found the side. Today they found the other side. The voice of the young seeking poet writing in with uncertainty to Rilke, famous for his work already. And all this while we already knew that Rilke chose to spend finite moments from his precious time carefully writing back. Our finitude makes time dear to us all, but may we all learn to stop and lift those who come crawling to us, asking to be shown the way so that they may learn to walk and eventually fly. Beautiful. Nice. Thank you. Right? Thank you for the context on that. Okay, so I will pick up where I left off. Where did I leave off? When, when you dropped out, um, V came in and she was driving. She, we were gonna let her read, but she was driving. And so we're waiting for her to pull over, just so you know. So when she pulls over, she gets in. Okay. Okay. Perfect. Just so you know. Perfect. Welcome back, V.
Okay, I'll just pick up anywhere. It's 1980 when she goes outside. And she wasn't alive then, so it's as if her needs are invisible. She's the only one that works, so she leaves, already broken, already exhausted, still drunk from 2,445 days of partying. He says she enabled herself, but the truth is everywhere. The truth is the beer on the table, deaf in the room. The truth is in the conversations, but he only listens to himself. Himself from 1980. So every conversation in the future is a lost cause. She leaves with habits and pain and eventually her mom. She is unable to see which way the ball is coming from, but she leaves. He texts her. He buys her a ticket and she goes to visit. It's been years since she saw him. He hadn't changed a bit, but she had. She was in tune with her body. She was in tune with energy everywhere. And even though his was off, they had done things before. His security blanket was the same as it was before and he had done nothing with it. His body was still intact though. (laughs) My God, was his body still intact? So she sat on every corner until she was satisfied. She, she learned something that day. Encouragement goes a long way. Last time she saw him, I think they both knew everything would be platonic from there on out. They stopped fighting. His mom no longer talks down on her now. It brings her comfort, but she still doesn't feel comforted because she is alone, attractive, and unattached. The night falls and she grabs her bag like any other bag lady, except she isn't a bag lady because she is able to work through her problems. So he, so she grabs her bag, puts on her smile and forces herself outside while the forces play as her guide. All right, that was a snippet of that poem. All right. Magnificent. Thank you. I would have liked to hear the whole thing. <laughs> it's a work in progress. <laughs> it's a work in progress. Mm-hmm. All right, Cynthia, you are up next. Awesome. Shall I continue to record or do you want me to pause it? Oh, uh, yeah, it's yeah, fine. Yeah, that was the only one that was wrong. <laughs> Everything else is just spoken word. Chapter 40. Love is all important. Display it more. Elsa's mm-hmm. chapter 6. Let's see. Trigger warning. Just violence against transgender persons. Woohoo! I got the job at Uptown Fashions. I'll get paid weekly on Fridays. The manager, Gerald, whoops, sorry, said, they run an inclusive store where everyone is entitled to feel welcome. I like it. A store about love and fashion. But what do I know about fashion? I dress to cover my body to make it rep- respectable for public display. That's about all. Give me comfortable jeans or shorts, a tee or a tank, and I'm good to go. I just hope I don't tank the first week on the job. Getting a paycheck weekly will let me contribute to Mr. Alford's household and display my fitness my ability to be emancipated as everyone will be able to see that i cover my debts and pay my way i am a very responsible person i do love that about myself another quality about myself that i love is resourcefulness for i saw a fish tank in the window of the pawn shop in the strip mall where i now work and i'm thinking my first check should cover the cost sometimes mr alfred seems troubled by ghosts i think from vietnam fish tanks are calming. He's done much for me. After that, I'll begin depositing my check to savings weekly and paying him an agreed upon portion. He is more than fair to everyone. Indeed, while I still don't always understand his speech, I do see that he never fails to display the utmost chivalrous behavior, even when he he is attempting to display a grouchy demeanor. This old man with his gruff voice oozes love for humanity and animals for everyone out of his pores i hope he likes the tank if he doesn't want fish i'll make a terrarium one that only needs watering weekly or less this cottage isn't nearly as big as where i lived before maybe i should cover my bases and check with mr alfred first cover myself in case he needs that money 
in case he needs what money I can offer more than something to display in the living room. Gerald says that after 12 weeks, three months, I'll be up for a performance review and a possible raise. I love being employed, but I must admit my spirits tanked when he introduced me to my coworker, Harmonia, who I recognized as a guy everyone talks about at school, usually saying nasty stuff. But everyone didn't see how beautiful she is as a girl and how her makeup is covering a mass of bruises on her dark skin that her dark skin only hides so much. After seeing her, my emotional gas tank is low. I'm feeling troubled, having seen the evident display across Harmonia's features of the lack of love in this world for people who are different. When I asked, she said the attack happened two weeks ago. Why do the scum suckers at the bottom of the tank always want to harm those who are different? In a weekly activity period in middle school, not to mention probably every class in elementary, we covered why love is all, so all important, how all of us need it. Why is it so hard to display? Thank you. Very beautiful, sad and beautiful. More tough poetry. I'm telling you, um, what's the answer to that question? We don't have one yet, mm. <laughs> but let's teach mm. everybody to love. Mm. Yes. I love that. Well, it looks like V was having a hard time pulling over. Okay. Um, so what do you all want to do? You want to do a quick little lightning round? Shoom, shoom or end it. Well, I'm, I'm always ready to start. Wrong. Yeah. <laughs> <Same with John. laughs> Love it. All right, John, go ahead. Well, you got to find something to do first, which will take a couple seconds here. No problem. I feel, um, I just feel so at home when poetry is involved. Like, <clears throat> yeah. When I'm out of my element, I'm out of my element. But when poetry is involved, it's just like, okay, let's let's do this. <laughs> well, the first thing we come across are Shakespeare's 30th and 31st sonnets. Yes. When to the sessions of sweet silent thought, I summon up remembrance of things past. I sigh the lack of many a thing I sought and with old woes new wail my dear time's waste. Then can I drown an eye unused to flow for precious friends hid in death's dateless night and weep afresh love's long since canceled woe and moan the expense of many a vanished sight. Then can I grieve at grievances foregone and heavily from woe to woe tell or the sad account of four bemoaned moan which I knew pay as if not paid before. But if the while I think on thee, dear friend, all losses are restored and sorrows end. Thy bosom is endeared with all hearts, which I by lacking have supposed dead. And there reigns love and all love's loving parts and all those friends which I thought buried. How many a holy and obsequious tear hath dear religious love stoned from mine eye as interest of the dead which now appear but things removed that in thee lie. Thou art the grave where buried love doth live hung with the trophies of my lovers gone who all their parts of me to thee did give that do of many now is thine alone. Their images I love I view in thee and thou all they hast all the all of me. So wrote William Shakespeare. I appreciate that. Um, Ayati and I, we were having a conversation before you joined and we were talking about some of the poets that you read um, and I couldn't pull out all of the names. I pulled out Webb Du Bois. Correct Ooh. me if I'm saying that. Webb. W. E. Du Bois. No, I've never done a W. E. Du Bois. No. Nope. 
Oh, see, well, I was making things up. Um, Martin I do. Luther King Jr., you did read him, though. Oh, yeah. I, I do know a little bit about W.E. Du Bois, who does not fit with today's um, usual uh, wordings. But uh... who else did you? Okay. What is the woman's name who did the poem about the moth? And about the what? The moth. The moth? Mm hmm. The moth. The moth. The moth. Like, like, uh, okay. Okay. The moth. I, got, I feel like I have to Google it. Um, her, and she had like a brother who was also a poet as well. Um, oh, it must be the, um, okay, the, the Rosettes maybe? Because they were a poetry sibling. No? I don't know. I have to Google well, it. Are you? Um, I'm yeah. not sure about moth, but let's try a little bit here. The moth. Um, not that. I feel like her first name is Anne. Oh, wait, did I just? No, no. I have, a rock. I'm going to have to try a little, little different search here. And let's do, um, it's not Ann Arbor. No. I know the only two there? things with the word moth in them, and I don't think. I've got mother by Ann Arbor and I've got Poem for a Shaw by the Moth. No, no, neither one is what you want. The Moth, Love Hurts. No, those are the Moth. Yeah. I'm going to have to take a minute to um, <clears throat> to do a little research. That's like a homework assignment. <laughs> yeah. um, the only poem that I would have done with the word Moth in it is Baudelaire's <laughs> Hymn to Beauty. No. No, you're right. <laughs> no. I'm going to have to it brainstorm. Must be, it must be really frustrating right now for you. <laughs> no, I'm going to let it go. Although I may do some research later today and figure out what poem. Maybe the title wasn't The Moth, but it was no. about. Huh? About well, a moth? Just, just I don't think check so. Out just check out the link I shared. It's a tiny poem. And yeah. yeah, because your brother and sister poet reminded me of her. And there's a mention of a moth in the poem. So I don't know. It's a big shot. Oh, National Poetry Library. I love that. Mm. Here we go with the worms again. <laughs> <laughs> okay, who's up next? Um, Ayati. Um, can Cynthia go next? I, I need a bit of time. Yes. Okay, sure. Did you say a lightning round? Yeah, or do you? Let's see, let's see. Um, that means a sonnet. All right, um, chapter 44. Have you heard the good news, Mr. Alfred Goodman? So tell me, have you all heard the good news? It's in a sweet book of words on this shelf, how Jesus freed the slaves and helped the Jews. I study it daily to help myself. You can learn from stories in the Bible, how to treat others and live well and love, stories of hate, war, and rage, quite tribal. But you can learn from these, my little dove. Study the Psalms and emote through your heart. Care for each other, we are all in need. Aim love for the next man with a straight dart. Helping for other, each other is a gift indeed. Come study with us on Wednesday nights and help share God's love across this great land. Can I ask you to read that again? Like, it, it was a little fast for me. I'm sorry. I said, can I ask you to read it again? It was a little. Uh, oh, okay. Sorry. You read it a little fast. Okay. 
Have you heard the good news, Mr. Alfred Goodman's chapter five? So tell me, have you all heard the good news? It's in a sweet book of words on this shelf, how Jesus freed the slaves and helped the Jews. I study it daily to help myself. You can learn from stories in the Bible, stories of hate, war, and rage, quite tribal. But you can learn from these, my little doe. Study the Psalms and emote through your heart. Care for each other. We are all in need. Aim love for the next man with a straight dart. Helping each other is a gift indeed. Come study with us on Wednesday nights and help us share God's love across this great land. So you said this is chapter 43. So is this part of a... This is a, this is a 50 chapter novel of, um, of it's seven teenagers and three adults in a semi-fictional Nashville of 2020. Interesting. Yeah, you, yeah, you're just stepping into the middle of the novel. Unfortunately, that's a problem with poetry nights. <laughs> but you've written it so well like yeah. I'm sure she's keeping up you know it's one of those where you can open up in any chapter and just be like okay <laughs> where are we <laughs> got it <laughs> awesome okay so I found the poem um and uh, it's, it's by Edward Hirsch, and it's called Wild Gratitude. Tonight, when I knelt down next to our cat, Zooey, and put my fingers into her clean cat's mouth and rubbed her swollen belly that will never know kittens, and watched her wriggle onto her side, pawing the air, and listened to her solemn little squeals of delight, I was thinking about the poet, Christopher Smart, who wanted to kneel down and pray without ceasing in every one of the splintered London streets and was locked away in the madhouse at St. Luke's with his sad religious mania and his wild gratitude and his grave prayers for the other lunatics and his great love for his speckled cat, Geoffrey. All day today, August 13th, 1983, I remembered how Christopher Smart blessed this same day in August 1759 for its calm bravery and ordinary good conscience. This was the day that he blessed the postmaster general and all conveyancers of letters for their warm humanity and the gardeners for their private benevolence and intricate knowledge of the language of flowers and the milkmen for their universal human kindness. This morning, I understood that he loved to hear, as I have heard, the soft clink of milk bottles on the rickety stairs in the early morning, and how terrible it must have seemed when even this small pleasure was denied him. But it wasn't until tonight, when I knelt down and slipped my hand into Zumi's waggling mouth, that I remembered how he had called Geoffrey, the servant of the living God, duly and daily serving him and for the first time understood what it meant. Because it wasn't until I saw my own cat whine and roll over on her fluffy back that I realized how gratefully he had watched Geoffrey fetch and carry his wooden cork across the grass in the wet garden, patiently jumping over a high stick, calmly sharpening his claws on the wood pile, rubbing his nose against the nose of another cat, stretching or slowly stalking his traditional enemy, the mouse a rodent, a creature of great personal valor, and then dallying so much that his enemy escaped. And only then did I understand it is Geoffrey and every creature like him who can teach us how to praise, purring in their own language, reading themselves in the living fire. Wow. Yeah, Excellent. Quite a poem. Excellent. Excellent. Yeah, nice. Absolutely fabulous. 
Uh, if I don't know if you guys know this uh, book. Uh, can you see it? It's called Poems of Gratitude. Mm. Uh, yeah, it's got it's got a wonderful collection of poetry. And this is the first poem in that. Love it. Poems of Gratitude. Well, I am grateful for you all showing up tonight. <laughs> Edited by Emily. Ooh, how do you I'm say grateful that? Grateful you organized it. Oh, thank you so much. Yeah. Right. Thank you all for joining us. Um, Ayati, hopefully we'll stay in contact and you can connect me with, um, yeah, someone else to be a part of the panel. Cynthia is going to be a part of the panel that we're going to have uh, June 19th for LGBTQIA+. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> awesome. Um, so yeah, that's it. That's it. Hopefully I'll see you guys next Monday. Jenny, thank you for vibing with us and listening in. It's always just a treat to have you here. Um, so thank you for being with us on yet another Monday. Thank you for doing this. Yeah. Yay. Thank you. Okay. All right. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.